Welcome, Rob Ainsco here with Sim Horizon. I'm gonna go over some of the new affinity mask settings um, with Prepared 3D. Um, to start that process off, we need to start with a tool called Process Lasso. Um, you can find Process Lasso from this website here. There is a free version and a pro version. Um, for the purposes of what I've been doing here, the free version is more than adequate. Um, but if you want to support the development of this product, um, go ahead and purchase the pro version. Uh, here's a quick list of the differences between the free and the pro version. Um, the uh, yes partial and the trial period only and the no flags on those particular features um, listed here uh, are not necessary for what I'm about to go over today so you don't need them so you should be able to be fine with the free version. Once you've downloaded and installed Process Lasso you should see an icon that will appear in your system tray in the lower right hand corner. So we go ahead and bring up Process Lasso with a click on the system tray icon and you can see we have Process Lasso here. Um, now what I'm going to do is um, bring up Chase Plane and I run Chase Plane externally. I don't run it with pre prepared 3D start. So uh, we're going to load up Chase Plane. And we've got the Chase Plane process now running. As you can see over here in Process Lasso, we have two Chase Plane executables that are running. Now we're going to go ahead and change their affinity mask. Um, I've already done this. I've set this to core 15. Um, both of these two chase plane processes are now core 15. Um, I am running an AMD 5950X with uh, SMT disabled, which is the equivalent of hyperthreading disabled. Another process I run that's external is the AIG AI traffic con uh, controller. I'm going to go ahead and set that affinity up also. I have it set currently to five. Um, so let's go ahead and take, find the process. There's a process, there's the executable, and that's the core affinity it's set to. Just to verify that, CPU five. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up task manager here so we can take a look at our core assignments. There's a CPU 15, which is memory zero base, so zero through 15. And this is a CPU five. Again, zero based. Um, and as you can see here, we've got activity from Chase Plane. And it's going up and down, trying to connect. And then we have activity from the AI traffic controller, which is on core five here. That's maxed out as it loads all the uh, traffic uh, files it needs to load. Okay, the traffic controller is finished loading. We have our little map there. And as you can see, the activity on core five is now dropped down since it's done loading. As we can see here, Chase Plane is using up core 15. And if we go over to process lasso here, we can see its affinity is actually set to high, which is a bit unusual. Um, normally those are set to normal, um, but you can see clearly the Chase Plane activity on core 15 there. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up my GoFly interface tool and see where that's running in Process Lasso and check its affinity. Um, I've gone ahead and set this to Affinity 9, I believe, Core 9. The GoFly interface tool is what I use to manage all my GoFly gear, hardware. Uh, as you can see here, go down to Core number 9, and you can see the blip there. That is the uh, GoFly interface tool running on its assigned core. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my little nav map connector here. This runs on a separate computer. Uh, let's bring that up. And let's go ahead and verify the process lasso core affinity. Um, we'll go over here to process lasso and locate the process. There it is. I have this currently set to core 7. And I can verify that. There we go, core 7. 
And let's go ahead and go over to the task manager here and see what core number seven is. And there we go, that's core seven. You can see just a little bit of act activity here for the uh, little nav map connector. Not, all that going, not a lot going on right now for it. Okay, moving on to the actual prepared 3D affinity mass settings. There's a helpful website by Ted Porter um, that has uh, the affinity mask uh, calculator for you. Um, and as you can see from our little uh, website here, uh, his website, uh, I set for my particular uh, case, I set the core um, two, which is defined in, for my AMD 5950X as the fastest core. So I set that up. So I enabled core two, I enabled core four, core six, core eight, core 10, core 12, core 14. So once I've selected the cores I need, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the calculate icon there. And that will produce the affinity mask, as you can see down below at 21844. So moving on to the prepared3d.csg file, um, you can see the entries I have under the job scheduler. Uh, the P3D core affinity mask is 21844. Main thread is set to zero. Render thread is seven. Frame worker thread is six. Below that is a commented uh, section uh, describing the cores that I have prepared 3D set up to use. Um, those are the actual core numbers and then these relative references, which is what the zero, seven, and six are about. It's important to note that the main thread scheduler value equal to zero um, represents the first core within the P3D masked cores. Um, the parentheses two indicates that's the actual core number. So the main thread scheduler equal to zero is actually core two. The, why, the reason why it's zero is because it's the first masked entry in the above there, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14. Those are the mass entries and zero is two, the first one in that entry. So the uh, render thread scheduler equals to seven is actually core number 14. And the frame worker thread scheduler equal to six is actually core number 12. And as you can see in the comments below that, I have OS 01, chase plane 15, two executables there, uh, AIG tech traffic controller five, go flight interface tool nine, little nav map seven, I keep those items commented with a semicolon in front just to help me with the reference so I remember what tasks are on process lasso and what tasks are being managed by prepared 3D. So moving on to the actual die layout of cores. Um, again, this is for a 5950X AMD processor and this is the layout for its cores. Um, your CPU may have a different layout um, and you can stagger the cores if you like to try and optimize your heat distribution or heat dissipation. Um, but this is a, a map of, of how the cores are, or how the threads are actually being mapped to each individual core. As you can see, we've got the prepared 3D main thread um, is on core two. Um, then we have uh, prepared 3D frame thread on core 12, prepared 3D uh, render thread on core 14. Um, AIG is mapped to core 5, little nav map core 7, go flight core 9, chase plane core 15. So that gives you a visual representation of how these threads are, or what cores these threads are going to be operating on. The four additional prepared 3D cores are um, simply there for uh, additional tasks that prepared 3D may perform. Um, it's good to have a few extra cores. It's not just the three uh, threads that, that can spawn additional threads that will operate on the uh, flight simulator. So it's good to have a couple of more cores. In my case, I got four more, but depending on how many you got spare, you could just have a couple more, uh, two more, one more, um, whatever your CPU uh, core count is. Uh, just give yourself a few uh, extra cores for prepared 3D. You don't need to use them all up. In fact, using them all up will probably not help. 
So let's go ahead and load up Prepared 3D and um, take a look at how the cores are actually being used in flight and how they should correspond to the affinity mass that we've laid out for them. Okay, so here we are in Prepared 3D. Um, I'm in the A2A172. Cessna, I'm taking off from Flight Beans uh, San Francisco Airport, um, and we have the task manager um, set up showing the CPU, uh, saying showing the core usage, and as you can see here, um, the OS on core zero. Well, actually, when I say OS, I mean the OS will, will take whatever core it, it needs to take, but. Um, uh, the OS is running on probably part of that workload there is um, also the actual recording mechanism I'm using. I'm using NVIDIA's uh, recording feature, um, so it's going to have some, a little bit of an overhead. Um, so there we have Prepare 3D Main, which is on core number 2, uh, which is what we defined it to be. Um, then we have our other Prepare 3D cores, which is core 4. Core 6, Core 8, Core 10, Core 12 is set for the frame renderer, I mean set for the frame worker. Uh, core 14 is set for the renderer thread. And now we have also our uh, individual executables that run externally. On uh, Core 5 we have uh, AI, or I should say, yeah, Core 5 we have AI traffic. On Core 7, we have a little nav map. And on Core 9, we have GoFlight interface tool. And finally, on the last core, Core 15, we have Chase Plane running. Um, as you can see, um, those additional external EXEs don't have a huge workload, but they do have a little bit. Um, so every little, every little bit counts, and the more you can distribute, the better. Um, as you can see here, my frame rate isn't terribly high, but my uh, rotation is fairly smooth. Um, the video rendering is smooth. Um, like I said, this process isn't about gaining FPS. It's more about distribution of processing so you have uh, a more consistent frame rate and a more consistent frame t uh, time frame. Uh, or I should say frame time. Um, over in the upper left here, uh, I have uh, information that's being displayed via RTSS, which is the Rivotuna server. Um, I've got the CPU 3 usage, CPU 13, and CPU 15 usage. Those correspond to the main, uh, the main thread, the prepared 3D main thread, the prepared 3D render thread, and the prepared 3D framework thread. Um, that's why specifically chose those threads to display um, so you can see that also in RTSS um, and then we just got basic uh, frame time information and frame rate information in the pink which is a little bit hard to see um, and then we've uh, got the standard uh, GPU temperature usage uh, and uh, the, how much video RAM I'm using which is around 9.9 uh, uh, gigabytes again. This is Orbix uh, TE North Carolina or True Earth uh, North. <laughs> Sorry, this is Orbix TE uh, North California <laughs> um, TE being their True Earth product. Um, and it's the graphic settings are at the end of the video, they're pretty high. Um, I think I have almost everything enabled or maxed out, almost not everything. Um, and then also it shows my RAM usage there. Um, that's accumulated usage. So that's RAM external programmed. Everything that's using RAM is, is displayed there. So I'm around 20 gigs of RAM, uh, around 10 gigs of VRAM. Um, my CPU temperature is around 45, 46 Celsius. And um, I th that's probably about it for the RTSS uh, overlay. Um, and as you can see here, I'm actually landing at a pretty low frame rate. 
just showing about 17, 18. Um, but it's fluid, and that's kind of the whole purpose of, of doing the affinity mask here is to make the experience more fluid and consistent and not wild fluctuations. Um, so, uh, you know, with that said, um, hopefully this helps people, uh, helps you move your, um, set up your, your computer to its best possible uh, usage. Um, I know a lot of people say prepared 3D doesn't use multiple cores, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's just false information. Uh, prepared 3D has been using multiple cores for quite some time. Um, it's just you have to be able to set that up correctly so that it can use multiple cores um, and uh, make the best use of those cores. Um, there are a lot of things that, that can happen or should happen so that you get you know, your money's worth out of the CPU you purchased. Um, and you know, part of that is setting up the affinity mask and mapping out cores. Um, again, this is not required. It's just um, should help uh, you reduce uh, wild fluctuations in frame rates and add some uh, consistency in your time frame data. And here's a Cessna 172 making uh, two United Aircraft the uh, holes <laughs> uh, while I pass them. Um, that probably wouldn't happen in the real world of air traffic controller. Um, there again, I wouldn't be landing from that runway anyway in this 172. Um, so that's it. Uh, that uh, hopefully this helps people. Um, like I said, you know, it's, it's not intended to give the best possible um, fluidity in your CPU. Um, of course, there's always going to be other factors, such as your GPU. Um, but at the end of the video here, I uh, go over uh, my settings. Um, most of them, like I said, are pretty much well maxed out. Um, and uh, we'll get into that right now. Okay, so here are my graphic settings. Um, traffic is middle of the road. Um, and uh, I have all, all roads selected. Display, I'm running SSAA, uh, 16x, and 492 textures. Uh, most of the world settings are maxed out here, including the reflections with the exception of vegetation. And then I've got dynamic reflections at high, that's another uh, heavy consumer. Most of my shadows are enabled and set to ultra. And this is with EA on. Enjoy. <laughs> 